Hello everyone, welcome back to a new video. At the beginning of this video I showed you some pictures of a crackle effect in the Cascade Daisy mold, which I'm using here also. But my camera didn't film, so I needed to try to um, make these pour or this pour again. So except from one color I've chosen um, all the same colors again because I really liked it and I'm curious if I can get the same sort of effect. So I'm using, like I said, the Cascade Daisy mode from Modes and Shapes and I'm pouring here my Ultra Cast resin, clear resin into the mold. So I'm covering almost the first um, step of the Cascade mold. The Ultra Cast resin is a medium viscosity resin with a rather long working time. So I'm hoping for some nice effects. So my first color here is from Etta Art, the Pearlescent Pigment Powder and it's the Salmon. So I'm pouring this into my first mold on top of my clear resin. And I'm very curious about that color. Before I used um, a different color and I thought, you know, in the whole thing, maybe the red would match very well. So I changed the other color I had in my previous pour with the red. And on top of my salmon color, I'm now pouring a mixture of interference pearl and some of the pigment drops. And yeah, there was something in my resin. So I needed to take it out. And there are also still some bubbles at the edges. I only noticed sometimes you just don't see them and then you notice. And yeah, you see I'm busy getting the bubbles which are trapped in the edges. And you see, don't fiddle around so much like I did. Otherwise you really can ruin your design. And now I'm just filling up my um, mold till it's to the rim and then I just let the resin do whatever it needs to do. So my second color is now here the mint cream and I'm doing exactly the same. I'm pouring the mint cream into my mold and then on top of the mint green there's gonna be the mixture with the pigment drop and the interference pearl and then I'm just filling up my mold again with the clear resin and let my resin work again. So I was really annoyed with myself because I really loved the first attempt of um, this sort of crackle effect and well, if the camera doesn't film, then it doesn't film. It's being unlucky. My mobile phone was quite full and then it just didn't tape. So now my third color is the Arctic Blue from Etta Art. And um, I'm pouring again on top of my clear resin. Just taking everything that's my little cup. And then I'm just using my white mixture again. And I'm pouring on top of my Arctic Blue. Then the clear resin and you can already see with the other two coasters it's working it's doing something and you really need to get leave the resin by itself let it do whatever it needs to do that's what i'm doing so it can make make it own effect and yeah just a quick touch because there were some bubbles on the top and now my fourth color is the Sherry Blossom Pink from Laura's Art Corner. And I really love this pink because it has a sort of um, pearlescent already inside the pink. So it's a very beautiful color. So I'm pouring this into my mold on top of my clear. And again, I'm using the white mixture and filling it up. There I'm using the rest what's in my cup and then I'm using the clear resin and I'm pouring on top. 
And I really love this way, you know, to do the crackle effect. You have several ways, you know, combining colors, doing your crackle effect. And I thought I'd go with these lighter, more delicate um, way of pouring the crackle. And I think it matches very well with the flowers or with the flower mold and also with the time of the year. So, and then I thought I give everything the same glitter. So I've chosen the pewter, pewter, I think pewter. Laura, you have to correct me. I think it's pewter glitter. It's a more anthracite, silver colored glitter. And I'm mixing this into a little bit of resin and then I'm giving this into the center of my molds. Yeah, now you see it. I just mix it with my resin and now I'm pouring it from the cup into the center, doing this for all the four coasters. Just make sure that I'm not taking too much and you will see it later when I demold, but on my um, pink one, I just didn't hit the center 100%. It just sometimes happens, but with the other three coasters, I'm quite happy. I can already say this about the final result. Now I'm just taking the dotting tool and I'm just pushing my dotting or my glitter a little bit to the bottom and then I can show you a little time lapse where you can see how the resin is moving and that the center is, is closing and that the outside is spreading a little bit. So and this is the next day and you see I overfilled my um, bottom coasters and I was a little bit annoyed with myself. I didn't notice when I left the room and the next morning I thought, oh my God. So I have a twin flower, <laughs> you see it. And yeah, I just carefully take it out of the mold. And because it's very thin there, um, it's still soft at that point, but the coasters themselves, they are cured. And I just went to get some scissors so I could cut the center, you know, where they are both connected. And later on, I just take care that, um, yeah, all the, yeah, overfilling will be sorted. But there you see still um, that I only divided them. So, and now there's my first coaster. And I love the triations. And I love that the um, light mica is um, sneaking through with the second one look at that it's the same you have the nice triations and you have the different shadings now the mint one with the mint one you don't see it so much but I still love it and you can see how different mica can react differently and this is the pink one and I love this one and the blue one the most even though um, I didn't get this effect like I did with my first pour, but I'm still very satisfied. And this is the final result. I um, painted the edges the, of the lower part of the Cascade coasters, and I think it gives them a nice framing. So with this, I love and leave you, and I thank you for watching. Take care, guys. Bye-bye.